Hi, and welcome to another uh, video on gratefulness. I'm grateful for the shirt I got for my son. Um, had a little fun with that. And um, this series on gratefulness is just I'm grateful for God's promises. He's given us such wonderful things that even in the times of chaos and trouble, um, we have precious promises in his word that we can cling to. Um, this one, grateful for the return of Jesus. A friend of mine asked me, why don't you do something on the rapture and the tribulation? There's so much confusion about this topic. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to touch this one. This is a, this is a big one. But I decided, uh, thinking about it a little bit more, I says, I can do a few things on this to perk some interest. So, um, the uh, first verse that I'd like to refer to is in the first uh, chapter of Acts. He said, uh, the angel of God said, as Jesus descended into heaven, he said, he will come back just as you saw him rise up to heaven. Jesus is coming back. The word harpazo um, occurs 14 times in the New Testament, and it's translated as rapture. It means to be carried off by force. And um, for every uh, prophecy concerning the first coming of Jesus when he came to earth the first time as a baby and lived upon the earth, there's eight times as many prophecies about his second coming. And the day of the Lord and the last day and several references like that. So there's over 300 references that says Jesus is coming back. So I think it's worth taking a little time to pay some attention to this. Um, also, there will be a period of time called the Great Tribulation, and there'll be more trouble than the world has ever known. First, let's talk about what is the rapture. So I'm going to use scriptures because there's way too many opinions and so forth out there. Um, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, um, read the whole chapter, but... Um, the uh, key verse is for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. There's a generation or there'll be a people who don't die like we've seen over you know history. They will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. Now, if that's some sort of death, I don't know, but it doesn't sound too bad. We'll be meeting him in a twinkling of an eye. The next verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. This is, sleep is a reference for Christians who've died because well, they have eternal life, even though they've passed ahead of us. We will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, however fast that is, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed, and we will have imperishable bodies. Um, a couple other verses. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and... Jesus himself said, the Son of Man, referring to himself, is coming at an hour you do not expect. Um, there's, um, it, this could occur any time. Um, there doesn't seem to be any event that has to happen before this happens. Um, some people ask, uh, this is kind of unheard of. Well, Enoch walked with God and was no more. He they believe he was just raised up. Elijah, in front of Elisha, the chariots of God came, and Elisha just ascended, went into the sky. So there's two Old Testament people who went through some form of a rapture. Paul talks about this, and uh, John, you can stop the video and look at these references. They talk about experiences where they were caught up into heaven. Oh. Now, what is the tribulation? The tribulation is the last seven years for earth as we know it. The great tribulation is the seven-year period 
the second half or last half of this tribulation period is about three and a half years. And this will be when the beast or the Antichrist is revealed. He wars against uh, um, anybody who opposes him. And also this is when the wrath of God will be intensified and poured out upon those left on the earth. Um, again, uh, you can look at these verses in the video. Give me a call. Um, uh, there's plenty of resources online that can lead you to these verses. Um, thank God. He's so good. He gives plenty of warnings. And he's been warning us a long time. So if you aren't right with him, it's time. Um, God's wrath isn't for is God's wrath is for unbelievers. Um, his wrath won't be poured out on those who believe. But as we know, Christians have been persecuted and so forth. Um, but there's a difference between the wrath of God and suffering that um, we go through. Uh, even a partial study on this topic would take hours. There are plenty of resources that can help you learn more about it. Um, my red line there is, you don't want to be here if you can avoid it. All right. When is the rapture? Ha <laughs> ha. Everyone seems to know this one. Uh, they don't maybe know anything else about the rapture, but everyone seems to know that that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my father only. This is... Um, a quote from Jesus from Matthew. Seems like everyone knows about this, but um, we've kind of gotten, uh, what you call it, hardened to it. Don't really, I mean, really, honestly, do you really think he's coming back? You think he could be coming back soon? The rapture itself is the instant transporting of believers to meet Jesus in the air and to be with him forever. Um, there's three ideas about the tribulation. Pre-tribulation is that this rapture caught catching up to meet the Lord in the air for believers will happen before the tribulation. Some think it'll happen at that midpoint, at the three-year period. Some think um, this isn't happening until at the end and that somehow we're going to go through this tribulation. Um, it won't be the wrath of God, but there'll be definitely heavy suffering. Um, there's still the thought that we could go any day. So let's not forget that individual death, our sleep, if we're believers, um, um, is, it could be imminent too. It could be any day. So we should um, uh, not be planning for mid or post-tribulation. We should be planning to get right and to be close to our Lord every day. Um, be ready. There's the story of the ten virgins. Five were ready. Five ran out of oil. Oil representing the Holy Spirit. And it was not good for the five that ran out of oil and petered out, basically. Um, they were not let into the wedding feast. Where is his coming? Beware if you're scoffing, because the Bible itself says scoffers will come in the last days, saying, where is the promise of his coming? We've heard about it forever. It's never, it's way out there. And um, then there's some other verses. Um, talks about how the suddenness of it, where people will be grinding at the mill or working in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. That's in Luke chapter 17. Um, again, I repeated the Acts verse. He will come back just as you saw him rise to heaven. That was the angel talking to the disciples that were there, but those words are for all of us. Sure, many Christians have been guessing recently or 88 reasons and why he's coming back in 1988. Um, many have guessed wrong uh, when he'll return. I'm sorry, I probably said some things myself that were off base, but I think those who are close to him can feel the imminence sometimes. And, and maybe we overstate. Uh, but the fact remains, he's coming back. And it may be sooner than we think. And there are clues. The last days. But understand this, that the last days, there will come times of difficulty for people who will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant. Read the news. Pretty much like that. Um, will it get worse? 
maybe, uh, you know, how long does God, when does God finally says enough is enough? I believe um, we must try to do our best to do right in the world with God's help. Um, in other words, ah, since it's all going to burn or go away, forget it. That's the wrong attitude. We are still down here as stewards. We're to do our best to try to promote righteousness, to vote uh, for good candidates, to do whatever we can to make this world better. Um, and uh, I think uh, we can still do a lot and influence those who don't know him yet. The most important thing you can do to prepare for this is have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Be willing to submit to the will of the Father. Do you pray the sinner's prayer? I'm not saying, did you pray it? I'm saying, do you pray it? You know, we really should submit to him daily and just ask for him in our lives, even from little things. Lord, I just, I want you to be a part of my life today. Secondly, let's let people know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. That's on my last slide. Yep, Jesus is coming again. Like my shirt says, I'll be back. <laughs> uh, I've had fun with this. The Bible teaches that there will be a rapture, a tribulation period at the end of days. We could be very close to that time. When Israel became a nation, there are very few prophecies left to be fulfilled, if any that are, I mean, that's the huge one. When they became a nation in 1948, that was a huge mark in time. Um, there's this thing about one day is a thousand years. Um, Jesus said he would rise on the third day. Hey, it's been two days in terms of that thousand years thing since uh, he left. So his coming could be much closer again than we think. If you got questions, I'd be glad to correspond with you, talk with you, um, or holler at me, you know, and say you're full of BS. But, um, I'd rather um, be full of Bible study than um, get caught here in the tribulation. God bless. Be grateful for so many blessings God's given us and stay close to him. Thanks. Bye-bye.